Hello all and patrons. So I want to get one of these charge controllers out on the fence today. We've got a little bit of sunshine today and a whole day of sunshine tomorrow by all accounts. So let's get this done now. So I've gathered together a few bits and pieces. I need MC4 connectors for the ends of these uh, solar cables. I need these eight millimeter diameter ring terminals for the ends of these two wires, which are going on the lead acid battery. And the only other thing I need to do is um, strip and tin these uh, yellow and black wires and poke them down into these chocolate block connectors. So let's do it. I'll start with the internal connections. I just want to uh, tin those and poke them down in these holes. Now I've got two of these um, in their boxes, but the other one I'm still a little suspicious of. It's the one I put a dot on the tab. And I'm just gonna have another look at that. So I won't put that one out on the fence just yet, but I will get this one done first because that will at least double my solar panel capacity. Okay, let's strip black and yellow. Just enough to uh, oh, can I do this left-handed? <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. Oh no, not too bad. Right, just tin this one. And uh, also tin this black one. Oh, it won't sit up. Right, yellow wire, I'll tuck it around behind. Poke it through this one. Yeah, it's slightly tricky, isn't it? Let's raise this up. I've got to make sure it's under the screw. I think that's okay. And repeat with the black. That's done. Let's put the cover back on and the screws. Did I touch my iron there? No, I think I touched that little bit of stand, but you kind of instinctively react, don't you? When you're in the presence of a soldering iron. All right, let's get these on. They will rust. Um, these are slightly recessed, so I might just put a dab of Vaseline on there. I don't mind uh, a small dab of it and it might help prevent the rusting. Okay, while well, I've got the soldering iron on, I think I'll do these uh, ring terminals. I like to use the small diameter wire entry because I know these wires fit in there. Um, uninsulated, I've given up trying to get them now, so I'll just get insulated and pull these red bits off. I find that cutters have a better grip on this than pliers, so I use cutters to get rid of that. Oops, everything's twisted. Uh, okay, so those can be soldered on. I'll get some bits of heat shrink. Put the heat shrink on the wires first. So easily forgotten. And then you have to start all over again when you forget to put the heat shrink on. Okay, let's flood this with solder. I'll go from this end. It takes a few seconds and then it'll just take. There it goes, and then poke that in the hole. And just hold it until it goes solid. Oh, it didn't go solid. I obviously haven't got enough solder in there. It's not a very long... Yeah, there we are. It's not a very long tinned end on there. Okay, that's gone solid. Now, you can if you're quick slide that up over there but because it's hot it shrinks immediately and uh, that can often get you halfway across and then it shrinks and then you can't move it but that looks good let's get the heat gun uh, let's see if I can get this all in shot and rotate it Ouch! 
my hand, my fingers are getting very hot. And the back one. Get that shrunk on. Not smoking the iron. I suppose that's understandable. And finally the MC4s. Now as I remember it, I think that is positive coming off the solar panel. And I kind of remember because of the red ring, they don't all have a red rubber ring, but I think that's the way it is. I'm going to pop outside and just check. Um, so if that's positive from the solar panel, this will be positive on my charge controller. And I think uh, this one has the, the metal female receptacle and this one has the uh, metal male pin. So it'll be male pin on the positive one, I think. But I'm just going to go and check all this because it's very easy to get wrong. Yes, yeah, so you can see from this burnt out charge controller that positive has what looks like the female, the female plastic, but of course it's the male in terms of the metal. That's got a pin in there, whereas that's got a receptacle. So my charge controller uh, needs that piece on the positive. Now these have been sitting out in fresh air and so the uh, metalwork will have all gone nasty in there. So what I'm going to do is cut these shorter and in fact those cables are too long anyway. So I'll cut these down, fit two new MC4s on the panel and then the controller in its case can be screwed to the fence there attached to the red and black uh, 8mm screw terminals here. These are the regular uh, lead posts and that will be ready to rock and roll and we've actually got some sunshine. Now I seem to remember from doing this before that you can crimp these onto the wires without worrying about any of this because these are narrow enough to feed down through these holes so you don't need to worry about putting these on first. So let's put these to one side, but this is the positive on the charge controller and that has the pin. So it's the pin that goes to the wire, which goes to yellow inside the box. So let's uh, just check that. So that's this one. So I'll do a nice generous half inch, sort of bordering on three quarters of an inch um, because you can pass, where's the pin? Yeah, you can pass the wires right down inside the pin to get the best possible connection. So let's strip this round. I should probably have one of those circular strippers which you just rotate around the wire. But you can't have every tool, can you? I think that's the black piece off. What can I use to grip that? Yep, now I need to uh, cut a little bit more gingerly so I don't cut the wires, but cut into this white piece all around. See if that'll come off. Not yet it won't, no. Good, right, slide that down in there. Now, I seem to remember it helped a little bit just to crush that close, just a very small amount. What's smoking? Something's smoking. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think it, would you? That these would have <laughs> so much power. This was just sitting on my table and I think these just got closer and closer and closer until they touched and it's completely melted away that um, connector. Oh well, <laughs> chuck that and get another one. Yeah, I kept seeing this smoke and I was wondering what it was. Yeah, that's really melted quite badly. It's melted completely flat on both the red and the black there. The ends have all melted. This connector has all melted. Quite a potent load of power in those uh, little inner loops. Now, which one needs the little cocktail stick 
stuck in there. I've got a feeling it's this one because this there's no adjustment. That adjuster screw offsets this one, the male one, but it doesn't offset the female one because that sits flat against the plastic housing. And it, I just found it was in the wrong um, alignment with these closing jaws. So yes, I think I need that for the female, but I'm not doing the female, I'm doing the male, which I think will line up pretty perfectly as it is. And yeah, that does seem to line up there fine. And then when I do the female, I'll put the cocktail stick in. I've got to make sure that stays in there while I put pressure on it. I think it has. And then you keep pressing until that little thing flips around like that. And then we're done. And that should be nicely crimped. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, that's fine. The uh, jaws don't quite cover the whole of the sort of area of those wings so the top bit is slightly out of the jaw but it doesn't really matter that's fine yeah that looks like a good uh, crimp there's a slight offset between the center line of the wire and the center line of the pin but i don't think that matters too much i think that'll get absorbed in the connector right i should better put the connector on now so it is this one that is the positive isn't it yeah that's the yellow side so let's get the cap on with the rubber thingy bob now this should just push in and lock which it has now i can put the rubber bung in there which is part of the seal yeah that fits in there fine put that over the top of it and screw down the cap uh, that doesn't look like it's pushed in very far. Perhaps that needs pushing in a bit further. Oh no, I think it's all right. That has a good, I don't know, eight millimeters or so of overlap connection. Yeah, I think that's all right actually. That definitely clicked into place. Right, time for the female. Ah, once again, I think I'll just crush these in because it helps get them started in the uh, the channel in here so that they go up the top and then roll round. Pop that in, get my wire. Try and make sure all the strands go inside. And, ah, no, that's turned, so that's no good. Yeah, it's rotated in here. I need to make sure it's absolutely vertical absolutely vertical like that so that it crushes up properly yeah that's gone up that looks about right okay let's go for that high pressure and that's it good and so once again Push that through all the cap components and that should click into place in here yep that's it that's locked in that should be visible just in the end of there i think it is isn't it yeah so put the seal parts on here let's do this one at a time. That bit goes in there. That bit goes over the top of it. And screw the lid on. Okay, that's done. So what I need to do now is go outside and I can't film this because I need seven hands uh, and fit two new MC4s onto the solar panel that's out there. Uh, actually, I can just do one more test of this by putting pause on pause, neg on neg, and just make sure that behaves itself. That looks pretty good. Where's the flashing voltmeter? One, two. And lots. So 12 point lots. 
Now I bought some of this silicon uh, oil when I was in Lidl the other day and I was just wondering whether that would be good for lubricating the little uh, rubber o-ring there. It's probably not rubber, it's probably synthetic, but even so, um, rather than WD-40, I think I'll go for the silicon and just uh, see how that works out. You get a tiny little tube stuck in the lid here, which is quite neat because uh, you're not going to lose that one. All right, see so if I can do this without squirting it everywhere. Just want the tiniest little amount. Yeah, I think some came out there. Let's just try that. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, also, of course, I've got to do this one here. And there it is, the two right-hand panels now both have a charge controller connected to the battery. So let's take a look at this one. Now this one's kind of saying 12.6, or it was when I fitted it. One, two, oh, it might be 12.7 now. And that we know is reading high. This one's saying more like one, two, 12.3 which is probably more accurate I didn't check the 5 volts on this one but I'm assuming it's a bit more correct so I'm just gonna have to remember that the one on the left there and in fact that one as well when I get around to fitting it reads about 3 tenths high but that's alright I can live with that so for the moment that's two charge controllers and I shall report back on whether or not that gives me extra power in the lead acids in the shed which are here how are we doing at the moment 12.7 not a lot coming in from the big trojans only 70 milliamps um, i have had a battery charger on here actually those red and black crock clips come from this thing which i bought at lidl it was 12.99 i think it's just a cheap mains battery charger and i have been topping these up with mains while we've had so little sunshine uh, just to try and keep these things um, with a bit of power for the lighting let's just try the lighting light switch lights up there yeah so that's all good and of course that's now dropped to 12.3 and it's pulling in more and more current as the voltage sinks down pulling in more and more current from the power wall. Anyway, that's it for the moment. I'll let you know how it goes. Cheerio.